What's up guys, Strategy 11 here, and today I'm going to show you how to rebuild the bottom end on your dirt bike. First steps, we're going to install the crank bearing, and I'm just going to take some grease and uh, put it around where the crank bearing is going to go into, and then I'm going to put some grease around the crank uh, bearing itself too, just to help it slide in. Now I'm going to use some kind of contraption I made that you'll see in a little bit, but um, next, we're just going to make sure that the crank bearing seated evenly on both sides so that it'll slide in, um, you know, even, and it won't score or gouge any parts of the case. So here you're going to see me put uh, a couple washers and this piece of all thread in with the bolt with the nut on top. This is just a uh, kind of tool I made myself to save myself 60 bucks. Uh, you can kind of make this if you want, but it'd probably just be easier just to buy the right tool. So I got some bar stock resting uh, so the pipe can rest on it and doesn't mess up the cases. And I got my nut on top and basically I'm just going to keep turning the bottom nut and it's going to pull the uh, crank bearing into place as you'll be able to see here shortly. And all the grease does is just help it um, slide in easier. Now you can either, most people sweat the bearing in, they'll put the bearing in the freezer and they'll heat up the case to about 200 degrees and then we'll drop the bearing into the case that tends to work a little easier but I just want to try something different but um, the bearing seated now and um, next up we're gonna grab our crankshaft I'm gonna put some assembly lube in the bearing just to uh, make sure whenever we get it started up that it doesn't dry fire or anything like that so I'm going to put some assembly lube on the uh, correct side of the crankshaft to make sure you do install the correct side first. So I'm just going to place the crankshaft in easily, evenly into the bearing and press down onto it. And it should slide right in depending on what model. This is a KX250 and most of them just slide right in. So I'm kind of putting a lot of weight on it, but um, it slides right in. Next, um, we're going to install the transmission gears. I'm just going to slide that in and not worry about the uh, forks or anything like that to shift with. And I'm going to install the second gears, set of gears. Um, you'll see me lift back up the first set I put in. Some people put them in all together, but I like to do one at a time. And so once I have both installed, I'm just going to spin them and make sure that they both spin freely. And this is uh, the fork drum, the fork shift drum, which I'm installing, so I'm going to put that in and then you'll see me lift up the uh, shifter forks and align those into the correct um, position. These two go on the, first one goes in the top um, kind of layer and the second one goes in the bottom uh, row and then the uh, skinnier transmission on the left there that fork will go right in the middle and you're going to want to make sure that that pins all the way down and seated correctly and I'm just kind of twisting it to make sure that everything is working correctly and as it should so next uh, and don't forget to install your two oil filters as you can see there um, but before I didn't show but I already cleaned my cases you can do with some contact cleaner or uh, that's a little razor blade, but uh, then you're going to apply your gasket, and you can get this at any uh, auto parts store. I'm just using a uh, RV gasket maker, sealant, or whatever it is. Next, uh, we're going to apply the put the cases together. And basically for everything you're putting together, you're just going to make want to make sure that it's going down evenly and that um, you know everything is set in place right and you're not pinching anything or um, scratching anything. So now I'm just going to tap it down and make sure that's going evenly and you're going to see me use my uh, fancy little gadget, homemade gadget that I made. So I'm going to put that nut on the um, crank threads and put this piece of all thread back down on it. <laughs> like I said, I would probably just buy uh, you know something from Rocky Mountain or Motorsport or something like that that fits your application. That way you don't have to worry about screwing anything up. But 
I found out for me it's just easier just to switch out the piece of alpha red for the correct one because I do work on motorbikes. And here comes the bar stock once again. And that's just so we distribute the weight evenly instead of, you know, scratching up the cases or whatever. So now I'm just cranking down on that um, nut on top. And the backside always kind of gets hung up just because most of the pressure is up front. So I just lightly tap on the backside of the case with a rubber mallet or in this case the, um, I forget what the hammer's called, but the salt thing, whatever it is. So I'm just keep cranking down and making sure it's going down even and the gap's closing even. And you can see as I speed up that the case is completely shut. Next, um, I'll be installing the bolts for the case, but uh, as you can tell, all the bolts have the same amount sticking up. That's how you can tell if you have the right bolt in. If one's sticking up farther than the other, or one you know goes all the way down, then you obviously need a longer or shorter bolt depending on how much or how little is sticking up, but every bolt should be sticking up the same amount. And there's a couple bolts that go inside the case, so make sure you get the try to get the cleaner ones. And next, I like to hand tighten all the bolts with just a extension in the socket, just to make sure when I do install them that I'm not going to strip any bolts. And then I'm going to go ahead and torque them down with my uh, impact gun and I'm going to try to do that in a crisscross pattern just once again to make sure that it's going down on a uh, level surface. So next is this kind of tricky little shifter that if it falls apart people don't know how to put together but it's pretty simple. Basically it's just two springs and those little, um, what are those, those little pieces of metal. So the two springs, one spring goes in the hole there and I kind of take it out of camera here, but it that piece of metal just goes into that little circle and just make sure that it works freely and you can push in the um, springs together with that piece of metal, but I'll, uh, I think I should get a better shot of it here in a little bit. And the main thing is too, just uh, you can record yourself taking it apart or look at my other video of disassembling it and see how it goes together. But that spring, as I'm kind of fumbling around here, yep, back out of camera. Okay, so it goes in that hole there. Make sure that it moves properly. And then take that piece of metal, that little clip almost, it clips into that, you know, the little circular hole. You kind of got to push the spring in and then slide the uh, clip in through the top hole like you're seeing me do right there. And once again, you should be able to squeeze them both and they should squeeze and come back like springs. And then you're gonna flip it around and put it through the, um, I guess that would be a clip or a holder almost. And that's basically how it gets put together. So, Next, um, we're going to install the uh, spring for the where the other shift drum is going to come on the other side. And it's basically a spring, that um, little washer, and then another washer on the other side with a nut. And we're going to install this first because uh, you'll see why in a little bit. So now that I have that installed, I'm going to go ahead and tighten that down with my uh, ratchet. And that little shift drum opening needs to line up with that pin there. So to install this, I'm gonna take my screwdriver and I'm gonna pry back the spring, or I'm gonna pry the spring back and then hold it down with my screwdriver, kind of wedge it in between something in the case. Be careful not to scratch your case or anything. But I'm gonna install the shift drum, making sure that that hole and lines up with the pin. And now you should be able to release that spring. If not, then you just have to hold it back while you install the bolt. And I always like to put a little bit of Loctite on that bolt, just to make sure it doesn't come loose or anything like that. And the reason why I pry that spring down is because it's virtually impossible to install the shift drum and then try to install that spring. So I like to do it this way. And I'll tighten that down to the right torque. And you're gonna to wanna to refer, um, refer to your service manual for all the torques depending on what bike and model you have. 
So that's done. Uh, we're gonna install the oil pump and make sure on the back side none of the parts fall out because that's happened to me a couple of times. So um, once we get that installed, we're gonna make sure it's properly seated. I'm gonna tap it down with a little screwdriver. Then I'm gonna take my uh, bolts. I'm gonna put some Loctite on those just to make sure um, you know nothing comes apart in the case inside the case which if it did then it would just get completely shredded so that's why I like to make sure everything's tight and secure make sure that nothing's gonna come loose inside and uh, as again I'm gonna hand tighten these to make sure I don't strip them out I'm gonna go ahead and tighten those down with my ratchet and next we're gonna install that uh, also uh, difficult I guess that'd be the, the shifter we're gonna install that and uh, that's going to slide in, in the fork drum. So once that's lined up, I like to take my bolts. Once again, throw a little Loctite on those. Tighten this down, hand tight. Get our other bolt, some more Loctite on it. Thread that in, hand tight. Now we go ahead and tighten both of those bolts down. Next, we're going to install our shifter rod, which there is a washer on the back side of that you're going to want to make sure that you keep on or um, you know you don't lose next we're going to install our oil pump gear then we're going to push that down make sure it's seated and then we're going to get our snap ring pliers and put our snap ring on and make sure the snap ring is securely seated then our uh, final drive shaft we're going to put our washer and our bolt on torque that down then our kickstart gear that's gonna turn all the way to the right and pull that spring and put that in the hole next to the idle gear and there's a washer that goes behind that and that just pops on then the clutch bearing and bearing sleeve and the um, clutch basket slides on and make sure that it slides in all the way to get to, to connect all the gears then you're gonna put your washer on then your clutch um, hub and you're gonna put on your uh, washer and your nut and then uh, tighten that down to the right torque. Then we can go ahead and install our fibers first and then alternate our steel, another fiber, and then keep alternating until you, I should end up with the fiber. Now this part, I'm gonna stop you guys because you should install your clutch actuating arm, which is at the top right of your, cor top right of your screen here on the left side of your case. And then you can install your rod, the ball, and that little pin kind of thing on the top left next to the clutch actuating arm. If you don't install that now, or if you don't install the clutch actuating arm now, and you go ahead and put the whole clutch together, you won't be able to fit that clutch actuating arm in. So you're gonna wanna to go ahead and put that in, put the rod in, and then you should be able to turn it like maybe 20 degrees left and right, and you should see the rod go in and out, and that's when you'll know that you have it in correctly. And now I'll, uh, show a little video of me installing the clutch actuating arm and this is what will happen if you do it the wrong way. So here I am, skip my steps, I tried putting the actuator in and it's not going in because the rod is pushed up against where it should be, where the actuating arm should be. So after you have your actuating arm in, you're going to slide your rod in and the ball is already in that pin but you're going to put the ball and then that little, uh, that top plate on. Now you can put your pressure plate on, put all the springs in, and then you're going to put uh, your bolts in, and I like to hand tighten those first, and as you see I kind of don't tighten them down all the way, I tighten them halfway in a crisscross pattern. That's just so the springs don't break, and so all the tension is not on one spring. Then we go ahead and tighten these down, and on this model I think it's about 8 foot pounds or so. Next, I'm gonna install my dial pins. And I, as you see, I have my water pump gear already installed. Then I'm gonna install my gasket and put those on the dial pins just to secure it. And then I'm gonna put my side cover on and lightly tap that on. And then install my uh, clutch cover with the gasket already on and install those two bolts to hold the clutch cover on and secure the case. 
and install the side cover to the case. And once again, I'm gonna lightly, uh, I'm gonna hand tighten all the bolts. And after that, I will install the water pump. And there's gonna be a washer most likely on the other side, so make sure you install that too. Then you can go ahead and install your oil filter. Then the uh, water pump cover with the gasket on the other side. Go ahead and install your three bolts and your drain bolt. And I uh, have those hand tighted. Now I'm gonna lightly uh, thread those all in at a crisscross pattern. Then you can install your oil pump, oil filter cover, sorry. Uh, I like to tighten those bolts with uh, hand tight first and um, you know, fasten them down with the ratchet. Next, um, we can install the timing chain on the left side of the engine. Put that around the crankshaft. Sorry, I have a bit of a cold. Uh, we're gonna put our uh, lock tight on our bolt. Put the timing chain belt, timing chain um, holder in place. Tighten that down, hand tight, and then we're gonna ratchet that down. And then, um, then we're gonna go ahead and install our timing uh, guide, timing chain guide. Sorry. Then we'll install uh, this little metal clip that goes on the cam, um, the crankshaft. Then we'll install our uh, flywheel and then the flywheel nut. And we'll go ahead and torque that down. Might have to hold the, pit, the connecting rod. And then uh, we're going to install the magneto, which is this. Uh, little sense that goes down to the bottom of the uh, ignition cover and then there's the uh, magneto that has two bolts so tighten those down it's like Donald Trump right now <clears throat> freaking sniffing uh, then we'll put our uh, gasket on then uh, it'll be the ignition cover and make sure the gasket on all these uh, covers Fit nice and tight and you're not pinching any part of the gasket together because you will have a leak then we're gonna snug up the side of the ignition case I'm gonna torque those down then we'll put a connect the wire to the case screw that in and then we're gonna secure the rubber over the screw to protect that and that's how you rebuild the bottom end of your dirt bike. Thanks for watching guys. Have a great day.